This video demonstrates the installation process of a Hyperstar conversion kit. It is recommended that this conversion be done by Star Arizona or by an authorized Hyperstar dealer. If you choose to do the conversion yourself, use extreme caution when handling the optical elements. The Hyperstar conversion kit consists of four components. Secondary mirror retaining ring, secondary mirror mounting plate, secondary mirror holder, which has an orange gasket on the bottom of it, and the baffle tube, which has a gray gasket on top of it. Begin with the telescope pointed up at about a 45 degree angle. Remove the cover from the telescope. Use a flathead screwdriver to remove the plastic cap covering the collimation screws on the secondary mirror assembly. Use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the screws that hold the retaining ring in place around the edge of the corrector plate. Once the last screw is removed, carefully remove the retaining ring from the corrector plate, being careful not to touch the corrector plate itself. Next, take the secondary mirror mounting plate from the conversion kit and align the three screw holes with the three column end screws on the front of the telescope. Note the position of the set screw in the side of the mounting plate. Using a marker, make an index mark on the original secondary mirror housing at the same position as the set screw. Then note the position of two of the screws that align with the set screw. Extend that line out and make a mark on the edge of the corrector plate. These marks allow you to return the optical elements to their exact positions when replacing it. Carefully lift the corrector plate out of the telescope by holding the secondary mirror assembly. To keep the primary mirror clean, point the telescope straight down. A clean, somewhat soft surface such as a magazine is perfect for helping you remove the baffle tube from the corrector plate. Turn the corrector plate onto its side and grab the baffle tube. It's held in place with glue, so you have to compress the baffle tube, rotate the corrector 90 degrees, and compress the baffle tube again, and continue working in this fashion until the baffle tube comes loose, and you can unthread it from the corrector plate. Unthread the baffle tube partially, but not completely. Flip the corrector plate over, set the assembly down, hold the edges of the corrector plate, being careful not to touch the surface of the corrector itself, and remove the secondary mirror assembly.
create a clean, soft surface, such as a stack of tissues, to set the secondary mirror assembly onto. Take the baffle tube from the conversion kit, making sure the gray gasket is still on top of the baffle tube, and carefully lift the corrector plate off of the original baffle tube and set it in place on the new baffle tube. Take the secondary mirror holder from the conversion kit and set it into the baffle tube and corrector plate assembly. Begin by threading it on partially. Note the position of the notch in the secondary mirror holder and the index mark that you made on the side of the corrector plate. Be sure the two are aligned. Lift the corrector plate and tighten the baffle tube. Again, noting the position of the index mark and the notch. Tighten the baffle tube down and double check once again that the notch is lined up with the index mark. Take the secondary mirror mounting plate from the conversion kit and note the position of the set screw. Align this with the index mark that you made on the side of the secondary mirror holder from the telescope. This will correctly align the collimation screw holes. Next, using a Phillips screwdriver, remove the three collimation screws, setting the mirror down onto the clean, soft surface you created earlier. Lift off the secondary mirror housing and keep the original screws as you'll use them to replace the mirror. Note again the position of the set screw and the index mark, making sure that the collimation screws are aligned correctly, and replace the original three collimation screws. Start each screw partially and then work each screw in a little bit at a time and this will keep the mirror flat relative to the mounting plate making collimation easier. Bring the telescope back up to a 45 degree angle and lock it in place. Note the position of the index mark that you made on the corrector plate and align it with the index mark on the side of the telescope, replacing the corrector plate exactly the way it came out. To get the best performance out of your hyperstar, you'll want to align the corrector plate. Look down the front of the telescope until the secondary mirror holder and baffle tube are aligned. Then move closer to or further from the telescope so that the reflection of the secondary mirror holder is aligned with the secondary mirror holder itself. The secondary mirror holder and its reflection should now appear as a single circle. Note the position of the baffle tube within this circle. It should be concentric all the way around. If the gap between the two is offset, you'll have to adjust the corrector plate using shims as shown in the next section. If necessary, adjust the position of the shims around the perimeter of the corrector plate. This will move the position of the corrector. Check the alignment of the corrector again and continue until the corrector is perfectly aligned. Carefully replace the corrector plate retaining ring. 
Be careful not to touch the corrector plate itself. To rotate the ring into position with the screw holes, use a small Allen wrench. Replace the screws, but do not over tighten them. Finally, replace the secondary mirror. Note the position of the set screw and the notch in the secondary mirror holder. Set the mirror in at an angle and rock it over to set it in without scratching the mirror. Replace the secondary mirror retaining ring. When you run out of thread, stop turning. You don't want to over tighten this ring. You've now converted your telescope to be ready for Hyperstar.